What's up, gamers? Drip Casca here, and today we're talking about Rocksteady Games and the mass firings after the failure of Suicide Squad to kill the Justice League. But additionally, I kind of want to talk about the state of the industry because I feel like a lot of these layoffs, these firings, these studio closures, they come from a singular source, and I want to discuss that. But let's begin. Hi, hope you're having a great day, and if you could please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, I see a lot of people kind of dancing on the grave of Rocksteady today because they just announced that they're doing a bunch of layoffs because specifically the fact that nobody bought Suicide Squad. I mean, I'm one of the rare people that actually purchased it, beat it, tried to like the game, and it's just awful. I mean, if you didn't see my review, short and sweet of it, it's a very, very bad game that I feel like actually disrespects not just the heroes, not just the villains, but even classic Rocksteady. Like, keep in mind, this is the people that made Batman super great. I mean, these are some of the best superhero games of all time. I love Batman comics. I love Batman movies, but I do think the Arkhamverse is some of the coolest Bat stories we ever got. And the fact that this specific studio pivoted into a live service game that managed to cost so much, take so long to make, and now completely implode because nobody cares about it. I think this is a state of more than just the game being bad. Over half the QA team has been let go. One of the people that was fired is currently on paternity leave, so that's extra bad. So this game apparently did so poorly. There's even some rumors that WB... Uh, Warner Brothers Games technically owns the DC video game universe. There is talks that perhaps Warner Brothers Games may actually implode or start to try to sell off chunks of itself to stay alive because of how many hundreds of millions of dollars they lost making this. But a lot of the replies are like, okay, this game is absolutely horrendous. Maybe the decision makers are the ones that should be losing their jobs. You'll actually notice this sentiment coming up a lot. And I'm actually super happy that people are blaming the correct people, that the individual developers, the passion artists, like even if I, I do see a lot of hate saying these characters look dumb, I think that even though the art of this does look bad and a lot of the choices I think are incorrect, to me, as a person that did actually engage with it, I think there is still a lot of individual passionate people that did their best and the game underly floundered because a lot of the people at the top are just pissed about this. A lot of the people at the top, there, there are some leaks that apparently the people at WB forced this to be made. They said, okay, live service games are huge. We need to have our own version of Fortnite. How can we make something that's going to have seasons and battle passes and microtransactions for these characters and skins and stuff like that? Just make Rocksteady do it, even though they have no experience with it. A lot of people are saying, okay, why can't you take a step back and recognize that forcing a live service game on a studio that has only historically done uh, single player games, it's not going to work. Fire the executives instead of the actual studio people, the people that are trying to continue to make games. Now, part of the reason I want to talk about this is because I do feel like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a bad game. I mean, objectively so. There's a reason it flopped. It's not just because of the bad graphics and stuff. It is because, honestly, it's just not a good game. Even people that bought it here, people that are actually purchasing it and trying to play... Oh, God, I forgot they're doing more expansions to it. Even people that engaged with it with an open mind can objectively say the game is just not good. But I feel like part of the problem of Suicide Qual Killed the Justice League is that it's made for no one. So I used to be very into business biographies. I'm going to do a bit of a tangent here, but I promise it perfectly ties into this. 
So I would read a bunch of different stuff about how they made Grand Theft Auto, the book about how they made Doom, all sorts of different stuff, but also a bunch of tech stuff. And I read the very famous Steve Jobs biography. Uh, It's good. Even if you hate Apple, it's a great taste of how big billion dollar corporations are grown and investments and stuff like that. In fact, I thought the cover of the book was so good, I decided to reenact it in my own official headshots. Uh, Not my proudest moment. But my point is the fact that something that Steve Jobs talked about is instead of just chasing trends, he'd try and make them. There's like a famous quote where he said, I didn't ask anyone if they wanted an iPhone, essentially meaning that, okay, no one had made a smartphone yet. Everybody had flip phones and had touch screens on like iPods, but making the iPhone the first smartphone It was a huge success because, honestly, it was so innovative and advanced. I feel like the biggest problem with the industry is it currently exists. And the reason I feel like there are so many layoffs and the reason that so much stuff is about to continue to get worse is because companies are chasing trends. Companies are trying to not just make games, they're trying to make as much profit possible. Instead of attempting to create passion projects that end up being profitable, they chase the trends, they chase whatever's big and cool in their minds, but game development continues to take longer and longer and longer. Like, I've made a couple videos now about the failure of Concord, and I'm a big believer in the fact that that took eight years to make. Officially, they've declared that they started development when Overwatch 1 came out and Overwatch 2 is already dead at this point. The fact that they just chased that trend, they ran until they freaking died. Stuff like that, I feel like, is the problem with the gaming industry right now. So I decided to pull this up just for the heck of it. Here are the top selling games right now. This is uh, literally, I'm recording this today on uh, September 2nd. Here is the top selling games on Steam as I currently record this. Now, what you'll notice here is that the biggest games are free-to-play stuff that's actually good, like uh, all my friends right now are addicted to Once Human, but additionally, I think a lot of these games, the biggest games, are either safe bets or stuff that is quirky and weird and passionate. Black Myth Wukong completely taking over the world. Let's scroll down here a bit. Uh, Stuff like Risk of Rain 2. God, I put so many hours into that. Red Dead Redemption 2, Elden Ring... Uh, my point is the fact that, oh my god, Squirrel with a Gun is way higher than I thought it would be. Uh, also, I have some sort of weird settings on my thing where it keeps trying to block games that have possible titties in them. But Baldur's Gate 3, my point is the fact that these passion projects are stuff that's not just good, but I feel like the video game industry at this point craves uniqueness. It craves to have something that doesn't just feel like it's made in a lab or creation by committee. That's like a technical term where a lot of times now games aren't made by an individual auteur. They're made by a team of board members greenlighting the safest profitable margins they can possibly fathom. And to me, I think this is going to become an increasing issue, which is an increasing lack of passion of actual stuff that's going to be cool and grab attention. Like, if something these days is boring at all, I feel like it's going to instantly flop because, to a big degree, I think the industry is just kind of hitting a saturation point. There are officially, measurably, thousands of games released every single year for Nintendo, for Xbox, for PlayStation, and tons and tons and tons on Steam. And at this point, if you're trying to play something new, like not even the big catalog of cheap retro games that are still awesome, if you're trying to actively buy new games, if you're trying to keep up with the industry, doing that requires just playing so many games. But additionally, I feel like because of the onslaught, the ocean waves of crazy big releases and cool indies and stuff like that, I feel like if your game is not able to shout and be noticed, it's going to sink to the bottom. And I think a lot of people are saying that it's not even that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is the worst game of all time. It's the fact that it's bland. And boring is a worse crime than anything else. This does not make me instantly feel engaged because, oh, look, it's Deadshot and Captain Boomerang and King Shark and all the people from Suicide Squad. 
This looks just too bland to be noticed over the 8 billion other games that are currently cheaper, more fun, more played, more active, and honestly just downright better for a lower cost. This has been a rambly video because I am passionate about this. The slow decline of the gaming industry is kind of weird to watch because I do think something has to happen, but I'm not sure how it's going to happen. We need to have a different focus on games, more weirdness, more innovation, more experimentation. I think that's part of the reason that so many people are so deeply excited for Astrobot is that it's not even about the fact that there's nothing else to play in your PS5. It's the fact that Astrobot does actually feel different. It's a new platformer that's quirky and cool. And yeah, we've had other Astrobot games, but it's just the fact that it's something that actually feels unique in an industry of safe blandness. But what do you guys think about this? Am I right? Does this seem like just frickin' tinfoil hat randomness? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below, and please, if you could, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please, keep dreaming. Oh man, yeah, I, uh, I feel like I'm gonna rip out of this shirt. Look at this. I, I bought this shirt when I was 15 pounds skinnier. Now, these poor sleeves are struggling. Look at that. Oh. I'm done being cringe. I'm done being cringe. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.